Retailers across the country are adding up their holiday receipts among the businesses that were expecting an increase in sales this year, mom and pop bookstores. Tony DeCopel has more on this surprising retail plot twist. There's a perception that independent bookstores are slowly disappearing, but that is simply not the case. Rows and rows of shelves are stocked with every kind of book imaginable here at Romans, Southern California's oldest independent bookstore, which means it survived world wars, depressions, recessions, and most recently, the digital age. But how? Independent bookstores have been staples of many communities for years. They provide small towns and big cities alike with carefully curated selections of books and expertly trained staff who can easily recommend all types of reads. As such beloved spaces, the sudden disappearance of independent bookstores in the early 2000s shocked and worried many people in different towns across the world. At this time, big chains like Barnes & Noble were putting smaller bookstores out of business. This has changed over the past several years, however, as online retailers like Amazon have become an independent bookstore's main competition. With websites providing thousands of books at extremely discounted prices, many people are turning to this cheaper and easier option to purchase novels. While this certainly creates a big concern for smaller bookstores, recent studies have shown that independent bookstores are thriving in this age of online retail. According to the American Booksellers Association, the number of indie bookstores have grown by almost 27% since 2009, totaling 440 new bookstore locations in the United States alone. As shocking as it may sound, this is the truth that many consumers don't seem to realize. I guess a lot of people think that independent bookstores are going out of business because of, you know, Amazon and big stores like Barnes and Noble. And for a while that was true. There were a lot of independent bookstores that were going out of business. But now actually, you know, people will come in and ask us and we'll be like, actually there are a lot more independent bookstores opening. It's kind of like people are appreciating the smaller stores more. And in fact, one of my best friends just opened up an independent bookstore. So why are indie bookstores thriving in an age where online retail and ebooks seem to dominate society? The answer lies in the communities that surround them. Whether a bookstore has been around for one year or 100, their success is determined by the towns they reside in. The support of local residents, school systems, libraries, and more are crucial to a bookstore's longevity. Independent bookstores use several tactics to gain and keep the support of these important people. The first of these tactics is hosting events such as signings with local authors, story times for children, book release parties, book club meetings and more. Local author events and book club meetings provide a great way for customers to engage with other bookworms in their own communities. For local and most of the time self-published authors, having events and signings at independent bookstores gives them exposure to more readers and helps them gain more experience in selling and marketing their novels. Bookshops host events like children's story times and book release parties in the hopes that customers will, while they're attending, buy books. Most children's story times are free for parents to bring their children to and involve crafts and snacks that go along with the reading of a picture book. Because they don't have to pay an entrance fee. Parents who take their children to the events will buy books after the story times end. Book release parties follow many of the same guidelines. Normally to attend one, a customer will have to buy the book being released to go, but they will most likely end up buying other books while they are at the party. Putting on events like these are not only fun for customers, but beneficial to the store and the profits that they will make in the long run. They give independently owned bookstores an edge over online retailers such as Amazon, who are not able to host events like these due to their lack of physical space to host them in. In-store events also draw customers who may May not have come into the bookstore otherwise. They're a huge attraction for people, especially when advertised on a bookstore's website or Facebook page. I think it brings more people in, people that wouldn't necessarily come to the bookstore or know about the bookstore. If they hear about a local author that's coming that they know or something like that, they tend to make the effort to come out and see it. And then once they're here, they generally come back. Because we do try to post our events whenever possible, then authors will repost or create their own events using us as part of it so it is getting the word out there more about us without having to actually put a lot of time and money into it. Aside from events, store owners and employees are a big reason why customers keep shopping indie. Booksellers practice an art called hand selling, where they physically put a book in a customer's hand. By doing this, the customer will be more inclined to purchase the item than if they had seen it in an ad online. John Green, a New York Times bestselling author, speaks about this quite well. He often recounts a story of when he visited a Chicago bookstore where an employee recommended that he read a book by an obscure Czech writer. Green says that he never would have picked up the book had it not been for that employee, and that the novel now ranks among his favorites. 
favorites. This is a unique skill that many indie booksellers have. They can usually find any book that a customer is looking for and will do their best to make sure their recommendations are curated to a person's specific wants or needs. This is especially important when considering the differences between Amazon's recommendations based on previous purchases and in-store face-to-face recommendations based on specific things that a customer tells a bookseller. We can figure out what they like to read and what they, we can recommend to them based on those suggestions. A lot of people think that this can be done online with an algorithm, but it doesn't work exactly the same, and I think the in-store personal experience is really what makes the difference. Personal connections and interactions with bookstore employees who know a lot about novels are a huge reason why independent bookstores continue to thrive. Customers love being able to stop into a store and chat with people that they know and trust for recommendations on what to read next. When you come into the bookstore, you actually get to speak to a human being and have a conversation and someone asks you about your day or you know, you're going on a trip somewhere and you need a beach read or you need something for school or you're doing a report or I don't know. It's just that I feel like it's the human connection and people just want to be involved in their com in their communities and they want to support their community and their economic situation in that community. While the helpfulness of employees at independent bookstores is a huge draw for customers, so is the physical store itself. Many independent bookstores have their own unique styles and often include pieces of history that can't be found anywhere else. This ties back around to the communities that build the shops up. Bookstores normally have things scattered around the store unique to the towns they reside in, be that local art, knickknacks brought in by customers, old articles taped on the walls from past newspaper features, or even pictures and posters from events. These little things give the stores charm and create an environment reminiscent of home. Details like these may seem small, but they're extremely important to the relationships a store builds with the people in a community. Small town charm can't be bought online and memories can't be collected on a basic retail webpage. These physical pieces of history keep customers coming into stores time and time again, even when they could just as easily shop at home in their pajamas. You can come and shop in your pajamas here, too. <laughs> Independent bookshops are magical places. They inspire people and provide homes for hundreds of stories. Perhaps this is why a sudden interest has been growing among people, both young and old, to open up their own independent bookstores. Over the past several years, the number of independently owned stores in the United States has steadily increased. New booksellers have been working hard to open up shops which will sell all kinds of books to communities across the country. Because of this, interest in events put on by the American Booksellers Association has risen drastically in recent years. The ABA hosts yearly seminars and conferences for people heavily involved in the bookselling community. One of their largest events, the Winter Institute, draws booksellers from all over the country to take part in networking opportunities and workshops to improve the quality of their stores. With large numbers of people attending these events and even more expressing interest, it's clear that booksellers care about the continued success of their stores. The scene of new booksellers only adds to the growing support for this community. When a bookstore first opens, however, community support can be hard to build. Some people have a drive to create their own customer bases, but others open bookstores because they already have them. Recently, there have been a rise in the number of authors who open their own indie bookshops. In these cases, the authors already have their own fan bases, which helps draw in customers and gives them a head start on creating a business. Anne Patchett, a well-known author, decided that she wanted to open up an independent bookstore with her friend Karen in Nashville, Tennessee. The town did not have an independent bookshop, so the two women wanted to change this. Today, the bookstore still does incredibly well due to Anne and Karen's continuous hard work. Their story is just one example of how authors are starting to make a change in their own communities by opening or helping independent bookstores. The number one New York Times best-selling author James Patterson has also started a campaign to bring aid to independent bookstores who may be struggling to make ends meet. The grants he gives to booksellers across the United States have helped to keep many stores in business, combating the ever-growing empires of online retailers like Amazon. Amazon's fast shipping and low prices of physical books are the two main aspects that make it dangerous for independent bookstores, but the website also provides another competitor, eBooks. The discussion of the pros and cons of eBooks versus physical books has been going on for the past decade, but with Amazon's release of e-readers like the Kindle Fire at extremely low prices, it's become increasingly easier for customers to buy books and read them instantly as online text. To counter this, independent bookstores can promote and sell ebooks through Kobo e-readers, which works specifically with indie shops. The Kobo, however, definitely doesn't live up to other big name e-readers like the Kindle or the Nook. While ebook sales are not as prominent as the sales of physical books, they can still worry small store owners. Books are one of the oldest things in the world and they still can 
you know, get a huge price just from a print book. I just finished a book, it's a mystery book, and it has to do with antiquarian booksellers in Denver, and it talks a lot about the price of books and what books are worth and first editions and that kind of thing, so just out of curiosity I was looking up my Harry Potter first American edition that I have. Right now, of course, you would have to find the right buyer, that kind of thing, but you're looking at, you know, a couple thousand dollars for one book, and I just don't think that that market or that interest will ever go away. Even with all of these threats, the future of independent bookstores is bright but unclear. As online retail continues to progress and grow, physical shops may have to make changes to the way they sell novels. Chain stores like Barnes & Noble have started to carry many other things besides books to increase sales and stay in business, while many independent bookstores have yet to make this switch. As the store goes along and gets older, if there comes a time where I need to make more money because the margin is larger on those things, which is why people carry them more often, I think if I had to go that route, I would if the store finances warranted it, but I'm hoping to not have to do that. Regardless of any future changes, indie bookshops have thrived and will continue to with the support of their communities. These stores bring culture, knowledge, and stories to all types of towns, and customers can rest assured that as long as they shop local, their indie bookstores won't disappear anytime soon.